<laughs> Please keep the church in your prayers as we can see if we can pull it all together. But I am glad you are here and that we have time to just open our hearts and just invite the Holy Spirit to come and be a part of, of who we are and be with us. And so it is a great time to just be together in God. There's nothing better than that, is it? So I have a few announcements that I wanted to draw your attention to. Um, Next Saturday and Sunday, the women are doing their Ladies Bazaar, and so it's a Christmas Bazaar, so if you need Christmas decorations or anything like that, or just want to come down and hang out, they've got chili, and they're going to be selling chili and baked goods, and just come on down Saturday, and then after church on Sunday, it'll also, whatever's left, you can take a look at the picking, so, um, but come on down on Saturday and hang out here at the church for a little bit. Um, Advent starts next Sunday, and for our Advent study this year, we're going to be doing, it's all going to be online, so it's free. That's even better, huh? Hey? We're going to be good stewards of our money. So the, the Advent series we're going to use is called Bless the Advent We Actually Have, and this is by Kate Bowler, and um, it is online in your bulletin. It tells you where to go. Go to the, the um, F umc.org, and if you put in this in the search, um, Advent Studies, and put the name of this in, it'll come up, and then you can follow online. Online is great. She's going to have music that'll go with it, other readings, podcasts, other things that you can look at during the week. Um, so I hope that this Advent all of us will make a point of really using this time to draw a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer and really understanding what Advent means in our lives and in the life of, of all Christians everywhere as we welcome Jesus. So I hope, I really hope that you will embrace the study. The other thing I'm gonna ask you to do with this study and this is gonna make you a little uncomfortable, is I want you to find somebody to do the study with, okay? And not, husband, wives, I hope you'll find somebody else, okay? Um, anybody, you're, anybody you're living with and partnering with, see if you can find somebody else. Um, but to just meet with once a week, good time to have coffee, or do it on phone, um, and just talk about, gosh, this really struck me this week, and this is something in my reading that, that I really questioned, um, and use it as a time to really travel through this Advent together, discussing the reading and, and thinking out loud as you're reading. Um, and so I invite all of you to, to find that person, and if you can't find that person, let me know, and I'll either find somebody for you or I'll do it with you, okay? So, um, so make sure that's an important thing of not just reading it, but sort of experiencing it with others as well. So that is our Advent study that I want to do. Um, just other quick announcements. Just if anybody enjoys doing hand chimes, we're, we would like to put down, together some hand chimes for the Christmas holidays, um, some special music. And if you're interested, please talk to LaTerry or myself. We need a minimum of eight people. So if you're interested in, in doing and it's really easy. If, if you can read music, that's about all it takes, okay? So um, I can do it. I'm going to do it if we have enough people. So if I can do it, you can do it, okay? Um, so that's uh, just let us know if you're interested in doing that. And let's see what. And, oh, and 
Out in the courtyard, you will see a red box, beautifully decorated red Christmas box. And we are collecting this week and next week a love offering for our staff. We have a great staff here. I have great people that I work with. And so I invite you to um, be generous in giving a love offering. We'll, we'll take that and then divide it up among the different staff members. So, um, so think about that. And if you ha have it in your heart, if any of the staff here at the church have touched your hearts and um, you know, think about giving a gift. Again, we're doing it not for specific people, but for them all, and we will divide it up among them all. So, all right. Let's breathe. I need to breathe. <laughs> Let's just take a moment and just think about what it means to leave the world behind for a little bit to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us, to use us, as we say, here we are, Lord, prepare us for the week ahead. Well, good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's our job to fill this house with joy this morning, so will you please stand? We're gonna praise the Lord today. Thanksgiving. Anybody have a good Thanksgiving? Awesome. How many Thanksgiving's still going on? You're going to have a meal today. I know one person. All right, then you will forgive me if I sing this two times in a row, I Thank God. I think that's appropriate today. Let's sing, I Thank God.
wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Just when I ran a road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. You pick me up, turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, changed my I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe. My doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burden and bitterness. Moving now, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk streets of gold, I sing about you, see my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. You pick me up, turn me around. Because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the same, come on, I thank God. our master. God is our savior. Jesus has died for us to give us new life. And for that, we are grateful. Amen. Amen. And as with those hearts of gratitude for Jesus who sees us for who we are and loves us still, that we go with grateful hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Oh Jesus, you are our master. You have changed each one of us. And you call us, you call us to go out into the world and to bring change into the world. To change every person that we meet by reflecting you and your love and your grace 
and your justice. Help us, Lord, to, to truly, truly, truly give ourselves to you. And when we say we are a disciple, that we truly mean it and that our eyes are set on you and that we follow you in everything that we do. We want to make a difference in your name. Lord, as we come off a season of thanksgiving and we look at all the many blessings that we have received, we are mindful that there are many people that, that are not as fortunate as we are. That there are people struggling to put food on the table, a roof over their heads, clothes to send their children to school. People struggling to break the ties of addiction, of anxiety or depression. Oh Lord, we, we need you because out, without you, it is almost impossible because you free us when we truly give ourselves to you. You help us to free ourselves from the sins that, that ties us down, that binds us. Help us to trust you, Lord. Help us to trust you. Oh Lord, we are so thankful for this church, for this community that you've called us to serve in your name. Right now we're struggling a little bit today, Lord, so we pray your Holy Spirit will, will bless this church and even the church building today, that all things will come together so that we can truly serve you. Push away all those things that hinder us in our own lives and as a church so that our focus can stay on you. And Lord, as we gather together, may we be grateful for each person, each person here, for the love, the friendship, and the reminder of who Christ is in each one of us. So Lord, as we go forward, we pray that your Holy Spirit will bring healing of our hearts, of our bodies, of our souls. Make us your disciples who can make a difference. And it is with confidence of knowing that you walk with us that we pray the prayer that you taught us long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is love. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, and burn like a fire. Well, I 
Would you pray for me as I pray for you? Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Open our hearts and our minds to hear the particular message that you have for each of us today. And I pray, Lord, that the words I say are not my own, but are yours. Amen. Well, we just finished Thanksgiving. We're all feeling really good. We've been out and doing our walking since then. Okay. Thanksgiving's over. Christmas is a month away. Advent starts next week. And we are in the middle of all the Black Friday and Monday, Cyber Monday and all the different sales. It's already started, hasn't it, the frenzy. But today is Christ the King Sunday. And Christ the King Sunday is a Sunday that gets ignored a lot. I ignore it a lot in preaching and so forth because usually you got Thanksgiving and Advent butting right up to each other. But we have the luxury of an extra week this year to think about what it means that Christ is our King. And it's a great way to sort of find a balance in all the frenzy of stuff that's going on before we get sucked into it. The Christian year starts next, next week. 
So it'll be New Year's. The last Sunday of every Christian year today is Christ the King Sunday. And Pope Pius uh, the 11th, I think it was, in 1925, he decided, he declared that this was Christ the King Sunday. And the problem was that he was seeing a rise in nationalism and in secularism at that time all around the globe. And he wanted all Christians to get refocused, to remember that Christ reigns over all, over all earthly leaders, over all things that we think about and, and try to get into. Christ reigns over all. And it sort of fits well with our, my sermon series that we've been doing this fall as we conclude today. We've been talking about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And we've looked at many different aspects of it. But here today we look at the heart of being a disciple of Christ. It means to follow. To follow. To willingly give ourselves, to willingly surrender our life the control of it and our destiny to Christ. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It means putting Christ first. Putting Christ first. So our scripture today comes from Colossians, the first chapter. And I'm going to be reading 15 through 20. And this is a hymn that Paul had put in Colossians. And it's a hymn that helps identify who Jesus is. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or things, excuse me, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Hmm. Did you get a picture of, of who Christ is? That sense of Christ is the one. Well, I've got some props today to help us understand who Jesus is. All right, so if, if you didn't get it quite from the, from the scripture, Maybe this will help. So the first prop I have, an egg, an egg. So my question is, what came first, the chicken or the egg? What, you don't have an answer to that? Well, in a way, they're asking the same thing in this scripture. What came first? Jesus or creation? Did you hear that in the beginning? That Jesus is the creation. Verse 15, the sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created. Jesus was present in creation. Jesus was part of the first creation long before a manger 
in Bethlehem. Jesus was there. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Don't you want to know what God looks like sometimes? I just want to see God. I just want to see what God looks like. We all do, and we see him in sunsets and in beautiful things. And here, the scripture is saying, Jesus is the image of God. When we read the Old Testament, we get sort of confused by the image of God sometimes. God who was judging, who was the warrior, but yet, who is God? Is he a protector? Is he the one that, that um, is hard to please? A judge that we'll never stand up to? But in Christ, we see the true image of God. God's character is one of servant, of a bridge builder. God's image is one of, who accepts sinners, oh, no matter what, and forgives. Do you want to see God? Look to Jesus. Do you want to understand the will of God? Listen to Jesus' words. Do you want to receive the guidance of God? Follow Jesus. Do you want to feel the love of God? and grow in that relationship with Jesus that crawls you deeper and deeper into a love like no other. For we discover the character of God in Jesus. All right, second thing. I don't have a big enough one to see. Anybody have any Gorilla Glue in their garage? All right. Verse 17. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. What is your go-to fixer? Duct tape. <laughs> yeah. Is it duct tape? Elmer's glue, super glue, gorilla glue. What is your, your go-to thing that you know will help pull it all together and fix whatever is broken? I learned the versatility of duct tape a long time ago. I was on a trip to Mexico and our bus broke down, you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, here we are on the side of the road in Mexico. And our driver doesn't seem that bothered by it. We're all a little stressed. And we, this was a work team, so he, was, he looked under the hood for a while, and then he, he turned to us and he said, y'all have any duct tape? Well, of course, we're doing work. We had duct tape, so we gave him a roll of duct tape. I don't know what he did under that hood, but in 15 minutes, we were back in the bus and going. Never travel anywhere without duct tape. But when it comes to holding things together, Jesus is stickier than super glue. Things are needed to be pulled together. Jesus is stronger than Gorilla Glue. And Jesus is more available than duct tape. Jesus is always there. And through Jesus, God is putting the world back together again. Jesus is the glue that, that takes the brokenness in our lives 
and in the world and puts us back together, creating unity out of division and brokenness. To be a disciple following Jesus, to be a disciple following Jesus, we need to have what I'm gonna call a sticky faith. We need to have a sticky faith, it's that faith that will show us how to pull everything together, make it all fit back in one place. Dallas Willard, his author, he says that too often in faith, we practice, not sticky faith, but sin management. Too often in faith, we practice sin management, where we focus so much on sin and trying to corral it in and control it, keep it from getting out of control. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. But he says, instead, we need to be practicing faith, and I'm gonna call it sticky faith. Sticky faith that pulls everything together, that we draw closer to God sins and all, everything, we just bring it with us. And we grow in that relationship with Jesus in a way that brings wholeness. And you know what, when we're all together, when that wholeness surrounds us of the Holy Spirit, there's just not a lot of room for sin in there. And suddenly as we're sorting through things, we look at the sin and it's like, eh, I don't need this and we push it to the side. Instead of trying to manage it, we just let it go. We let it go. Sin doesn't have a place in our relationship with Jesus. And sticky faith also helps us, shows us that we have a role in pulling things around us together. Work, family, all friends, when our faith just permeates out of us and flows out of us, it becomes a sticky faith that pulls all together in a healing, cohesive manner. And it gives us purpose in what we do. All right, so sticky faith. Our final thing is blueprints. Blueprints of the church right here. And I want to read to you from Colossians 18.20. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This blueprint of the church was essential in putting this building together. The builders had to know what they were doing. There was a focus that in all sections they could come to the central to say, how does this all fit together? What are we building? And these blueprints were key. And they built a beautiful building, amen? But these blueprints are not the heart of this building. If this building, no, the way we're going this week, I better not say it. But if something happened to this building, the church would still be here. Because the church is each one of us, is the heart of Christ living and breathing in this community. The scripture earlier calls Christ the head of the body. We follow the head. The head is in charge, controls, lets us know what we are to do as a church. If Christ is the head, we are the hands and the feet. 
put into action, action of the love of Christ. Would you say Christ is our Lord? Christ is our Lord. One more time. Christ is our Lord. And because of that, Christ affects everything that we do. Everything. Jesus went to the cross for us. Jesus died on the cross. His blood was shed for us. He freed us from slavery to sin and called us into a life of grace, reconciliation, and peace. On the cross, Jesus said what? Forgive them, forgive them. So Jesus is our king and reigns over us and we follow him. Disciples of Jesus Christ boldly and willingly profess our allegiance to Jesus, not to ourself, not to things, not to causes, not to family, country, but to Jesus Christ, our King. I once heard of a, of a woman, she was cleaning out her home office. Anybody have a home office that gets a little cluttered? Well, she decided, I gotta clean this out. And so she's working on her closet, the closet that everything got stuffed into. And while she was in there, she found this cross that she had bought somewhere. Um, and didn't know where to put it, so just put it in the closet. So she pulled it out and put it on top of her desk. And later in the day when she went to work at her desk, she sort of was moving it around and, and saw that it was sitting on top of her checkbook and her bills that had to be paid. And as she was looking at that image a little bit, she started to think, wondering, hmm, how does Jesus affect my finances. If money, my money is really under Jesus' rule, how is it affecting the way I spend, what I give, the bills that I have, how much I save? And another day she was working at her desk and she had to move the cross over on the desk and put it on another pile of papers. And she realized that uh, she moved it on top of her school papers. She was a teacher and they were papers that she needed to grade and things that she needed to do for work. And she started to think about that image of the cross lying on those papers. How does Jesus affect her work? Is her job really under the cross of Jesus? Is she there for her students? Her colleagues? Does it affect how she, the people she works with? How she prepares for her classes? And then again, she was working at her desk and moved her, that cross again. And it ended up on, on top of some, a pile of pictures of family and friends. And she began to think again, how does Jesus affect my relationship with others? And she said, how will Jesus affect me as a mother, as a wife, as a grandmother, as a friend? What will I be because of being a follower of Jesus? 
And after several weeks of having that cross on her desk, she really began to ask herself on a daily basis, what difference does my faith in Jesus Christ make in my life? What does it mean for me to truly say, Jesus is the king of my life and that I follow him? So that's what we've been doing this fall. Thinking about what it means to be a disciple following Jesus. When we follow Jesus, we give Jesus our allegiance. We give Jesus ourself. We surrender to Jesus. It makes a difference for us. It makes a difference for anybody we are in contact with. When Jesus is in our life, Jesus fills us with gratitude and with joy and with purpose, a purpose unlike anything else that we have. We feel gratitude that Jesus sees us for who we are, sin and all, and welcomes us and loves us just as we are sees us not defined by our sin, but defined by our potential of who we can and will be as a follower of Jesus. Who we can be when we make a difference in Jesus' name. You make a difference in Jesus' name. When he is your king, when he is over all. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we do give you ourselves. So many times we don't think we are worthy and we really are surprised that you see potential in us. But you do call us in love, and because you know who we are, that we are yours. Give us courage, Lord, to to see the possibilities in front of us, and truly to make a difference, all in your name, because you make a difference in our name. Amen. We stand in closing.
ready for the road. You're here and I know you are me. I'm here and I know you feel me come now. Spirit, when you know you make my heart pound. Ready for the road. Powerful words those are. Holy Spirit, come down on us. For our benediction, I'm going to invite us, since we don't have a camera, I'm going to invite you all to come together. Yep, making you move. Sorry. And let's just sort of, I don't know, we'll just wrap down in the front. How about that? And we act like we like each other. <laughs> We're the body of Christ. You may want to hold hands, you may want to lock arms, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And we say, Holy Spirit, come down on us. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, come, come down, down on us. I'm going to read for our benediction, a Franciscan benediction. That, um, a bishop friend of mine sent. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice, kindness to all our people and the poor. Holy Spirit, come down on us. We are your people. God sees your potential. Let it go and be God's people to all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. We are the body. Yes. We are God's people. And we give God, Jesus, our sovereigns. We surrender. So go out into the world and surrender this week and be God's people so that God is visible. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>